So, sir, please uh, begin with your lecture. Thank you very much. Uh, can you see my slides? Yes, sir. First of all, I think I am deeply honored and grateful to the department, particularly Madam Anuradha Mishra ji, for giving me this opportunity to interact and talk to my own teachers and fellow colleagues and students of the department. Uh, I don't have words, you know, to express the emotional emotions that are there, you know, going through my heart and brain right now. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, it's sheer honor for me. Uh, so when I was uh, thinking of uh, what am I going to say, there are multiple options. One was that you give a one could give a early research based talk, or you know something around that because all the talks so far that I have seen are mainly based on research. But for me, Department of Physics was not just a place where I got education, where I did my masters or PhD. I thought it was a place which, you know, turned me around as a human being. So therefore, the title UDP, the turning point. Um, so this uh, particular session is going to be a story which I'm going to narrate, which changed me forever. But before I do that, I must pay homage to my, my dearest, dearest friend, Santosh Salunke ji. Uh, he was a teacher for me personally because not only in the laboratory but outside the lab also i learned so many things from him and he never you know behaved as if he was an elder or he was a staff in the department and we were students so here in this picture you can see that i am I, I have put my arm around his shoulder on his shoulder that was the kind of relationship that we shared and this picture was uh, from the conference which professor gupta had organized uh, national conference on liquid crystals when we were on a trip to gateway and uh, I still remember Santoshi, and I will never forget him. He was a great, great, great soul. May God give eternal peace to his soul. Now, uh, I come from a very small village in Kashmir Valley in district Kulgam. This is South Kashmir. So I have just picked up this Google image from there. This is my village where I was born and where I was brought up. And uh, first nine classes I did from the same village. And here in this picture, you can see this is my home which is still intact there. This is the playground where I used to play. And here are the Chinar trees where my school used to be. There was no building here, but there were just Chinar trees. And under the shade of those trees, we would set up our school every day and our classes would be held. And whenever the teacher would not be around, we would be found often in this river, which was very close to the school. And we would be, would be spending hours together in the river. Uh, and that's how my life was. It was limited only to this much. I had not seen anything bigger than this and this small bridge here was probably the howdah bridge of my life at that time and this is my home in kashmir which is uh, you know like this today also although i'm not there but i still cherish those moments when i was you know living in this house when i used to play in this village and then for my high school i had to move from turigam this small village here to another village katrusu and for this, there were two paths. I could take this path or I could take this. Path. And on the way in between here, there was a bridge on the same river. And now the bridge is concrete bridge. At that time, there was a log of wood which was kept on top of it. And we used to cross that to go to the school. And once in a week or you know, twice a week, somebody or the other would fall into the river. And our whole day would go in, you know, claiming his bag and books and then go back to the our respective places after that. So that was how our middle schooling or rather high schooling, you know, went on in this small village here. So my circle, you know, went beyond this little village and I could go all the way up to this village, which was around 3.3 kilometers from my residence. And then suddenly in 1989, as Professor Gupta was sharing his experience, everything went for a toss and we had to leave. Uh, and I was a little kid. I had no understanding of what was going on. Uh, we simply had to leave. My Father came one day, he said, we have to leave. So we moved to Jammu and these are representative pictures. Uh, and, and then we, you know, it was a reset kind of a situation in life where I was exposed to an entirely new situation here in Udampur. I did not know anyone. There was a huge highway there, a lot of buses and traffic would be there, not like my own village. 
and uh, things went on like that for some time and then six months down the line a school was set up again this is a representative picture because we didn't have mobile phone cameras those days i don't have actual picture of my school but this is from the very same vicinity uh, so my school was set up like this and i remember we as students had set up all the tents in that school and we used to go to you know study we used to go and study in that school so class 10th was done in this kind of an environment and then um, 11th also was a little better than this and then in 12th we moved to another city jammu and uh, i could join a private school there and did my 12th class from there and 12th was first time when i got first division before that i had never tasted first division i think in fifth i had got the highest marks in school after that it was all second division second division i never was a very good student uh, or a studious student probably because of the surroundings in which i lived or, and there was no you know i didn't have any big aim in life that i'm going to become this or that i had never thought about that it was small circle and small life we were very happy in that but 12th you know was the first light so to say uh, towards getting better education and then i joined uh, this nice college in jammu again this was a camp college for for the people who had moved out of kashmir valley you can see the word camp here and uh, we would go to college at 2 and it would be till evening every day uh and then i completed my graduation by the time i completed my graduation i was you know looking for a place where i could get the education that i deserved where i could get the education that i that would you know change me but i didn't know exactly where that place could be and you know how do i reach that place and then after my graduation we were on a trip to bombay and this was the first time i undertook a train journey and uh, it was a group of friends actually so on one fine day we were at gateway again and i met a friend from jammu uh, near gateway and i asked him what are you doing here he said i am doing masters in chemistry from mumbai university at that time probably we yeah it was mumbai university at that time also and i asked him that uh, you know how is the place because i had never heard about mumbai university in my entire life till then he said it's a very good university very good teachers very good infrastructure you would get real good exposure here if you join and i kind of cut short my leisure trip and i next day landed up in university campus at kar and went to the department and inquired the procedure of getting admission and to my surprise or my good luck at that time the last date was yet to be over and forms were being accepted and i immediately applied and that's how i reached udp and i started my masters in 1998 and then you know rest is history you know i have just put some pictures here um, i sometimes you know in my dream i see this building and i feel as if i am leaving new boys hostel karmavir bhavrao patil hostel and i am going to the department and climbing these stairs uh, that is the kind of feeling i even get today and all the friends that i met there uh, you know who left a mark on me personally mandar and all the all my batchmates jyoti was my batchmate uh, for the practical uh, work and in the lab i remember in first year two of us were the only ones who completed all the experiments that were there in the manual uh, and then here in this picture what what was what used to happen is that uh, as friends when the classes would get over by november or december syllabus would be completed then till feb we would every day sit in the lecture complex and each one of us would pick up certain topics and actually teach in the class to all the other friends so it was a group of around 10 or 10 to 12 of us and we would teach each other and and that really gave me an opportunity to learn the concepts in a better manner and probably that was one reason why i could get the maximum marks although i didn't deserve them because some of these colleagues in from my batch were much better than me academically but because of their help uh, in those special classes that we used to conduct for each other things changed things changed for me personally and you can see here all the teachers rangwala sir professor gupta and professor patel i am indebted to this man here in the picture because when i completed my masters and i was going to leave bombay and come back to jammu i went to his office and i uh, informed him that you know i have completed my masters and i'm thankful to you for all the support he was head of the department and i told him that i want to go back home now he said no you cannot go 
you have to stay here i was surprised he said no you will complete your phd and then only i will allow you to go that is the kind of you know life i had at udp there were such teachers who were there all the time thinking about us, thinking about our future they were not just teaching us but they were actually looking at us every moment and probably planning what we should be doing for us and then he directed me to professor narsale and then i joined phd it's a long story i don't want to go into those great detail similarly professor gupta did one special thing for me he would you know i would go to his office and he said that if you want to do well in msc you must catch hold of all the question papers of last 10 years both annual biannual and then try and solve them keep a watch in front of you on the table and solve all those papers if you are able to do that uh, nobody can stop you from getting you know first division or or much better than that and i actually did that i used to sit in his office uh, get those question papers from the exam building and then every day i would sit and solve one paper and then he would ask me to correct my own paper myself uh, these are small small things which incrementally helped me to learn uh, to become a better student and probably to gain what i had lost prior to coming to udp similarly when i joined phd professor narsa said that uh, let's go to tifr i had not heard about tifr by then but he took me to tifr and uh, there i met professor richard pind and it, for me both of them decided that i should do my experimental work in tifr so that was a gateway which opened for me which otherwise would have never opened and then i spent around 2 years there i used to go every day do my experimental work there and worked with some of the finest students as well as scientists in tifr and uh, i mean i am really really grateful to each one of them uh, who directed me at every point uh, you know in the right direction and then similarly in hostel i had a wonderful batch of friends uh, some of them are doing very very well in life and in, in this picture in fact there are some who have become ips some are uh, the administrative officers in the maharashtra you know hierarchy uh, so we were a very good robust batch of students who came from all backgrounds or, and were really diverse and i could learn a lot from them and then you know my my warden professor vake would often give me responsibilities like here on on republic day for flag hoisting i was i used to be given the responsibility because i had never done these things in life here you know in jnt up till my graduation but there i got such opportunities and these were small small things but i would learn incrementally from each one of them and i stayed in room number 39 in in new, new boys hostel so when i landed up in tifr i met some wonderful friend friends vivas john and pai his picture i could not uh, you know arrange salim and professor pinto professor grover all these people uh, from the research you know point of view uh, they taught me they were my mentors they were my teachers professor apte went to id bombay later on so they all were responsible like bombay university was responsible for shaping my you know learning so far as msc was concerned For PhD, I would give a lot of credit to this uh, batch of wonderful people, who, from whom I learned, you know, experimental techniques, how to conduct experiments, how to analyze uh, the experimental data, and also they gave me uh, some unique opportunities. We had a conference which was organized by Professor Pinto in Mangalore, and I was, you know, I was usually responsible for. organizing part or a uh, team of uh, part of the organizing committee for that conference so there i learned how you you know actually organize these events what does it mean to organize a conference and i i i consider myself a learner so i would keenly observe them pick up small nitty gritties and you know kind of put them in my almira put in my box for future so that i could use them later on uh, and there i uh, the first big thing that happened in my life was professor ted forgan who had come from birmingham for that conference he met we met actually and we interacted for good half an hour and he said that why don't you come and join me in birmingham for phd but i you know i was already into phd in bombay university and i politely said that, that you know i could do that after my phd but i can't leave my phd at that time but this was first major uh, you know offer that i got 
based on whatever probably I had learned from the department and TIFR. Then I, you know, in between I got some opportunity to teach. So I went to RD National College again. You know, this was because of Professor Patel and Professor Narsale who, because I didn't have scholarship and it was difficult to sustain myself for my PhD. So they said, why don't you go to this? Uh, they need a person to teach. Uh, so I went there and I used to go as a visiting, you know, contact our base teacher. I used to go there and conduct classes for them. But then there, uh, you know, I learned the art of teaching because the students were from Bandra area. So you can imagine uh, for a for a kid from a little village, I showed you those images in the beginning. And then you have to teach students from Bandra. You can imagine this was a lot of a you know difficult job for me. But these people here in the picture, they all mentored me as colleagues, as seniors. And then, you know, today if I am teaching, I think a lot of credit goes to them. And I moved to Khalsa College for one year. And again, here I got a wonderful team of colleagues uh, from home. You know, I, I here here we did uh, this NAC, I remember. So for NAC, I, I picked up things and how do you prepare a NAC report, for example. So these were small, small uh, incremental things which I observed or was part of. And then later on, when I joined SMVDU here, all these things actually came handy for me. So in 2004, I returned back to Jammu after completing my PhD and joined this university. So you can see here, the then uh, governor of JNK, who was our chancellor, was on a visit. And then, you know, our life was like that. We used to uh, you know, organize things, how the buildings are going to come up. So there was no research at all that we had to worry about. There was no teaching at all that we had to worry about. Suddenly, everything changed. And then we were looking at buildings, we were looking at buying equipment, looking at how we are going to set up classrooms, completely different, uh, you know, work profile for me. But there were schools in the neighborhood. And you can see these children uh, in this picture who were kind of in a similar situation that I used to when I was a child. Although they had a building, I didn't even have a building in my school. So I thought that as the university is coming up, students will join we should simultaneously do something for these very children. Because I was fortunate enough to be able to move out of JNK and you know, get exposed to good teachers, uh, good, good uh, you know, educational environment. We should try and do something for these uh, little kids in the villages. So we continued with the children in the neighborhood program. We would bring them to the campus or, or go to their schools, screen movies for them, scientific movies for them, organize fun games for them expose them to computer labs, expose them to, uh, let's say, you know, these physics light-based experiments. And we continued with this for three, four years. Uh, it used to be a one week or 10 day activity every year uh, that we would bring them to the campus. Otherwise we would visit schools quite often during that time. And then in 2009, we got associated with a project called Mobile E-Learning Terminals. This was led by IIT Rudki. And in this project, we had, uh, you know, two vehicles with us, which which had a complete e-learning, you know, uh, equipment on board, and it it could conduct a class for 20 students at one go. And this vehicle could go to any remote location in in our area where there was no internet, there is no electricity, even at times there would not be even a proper road. But we would take this vehicle there, set up the class, and they would be able to access, e, you know, e-learning. Now today. We are conducting this webinar or this uh, this session through Zoom. At that time, there were no such gadgets or tools available to us. But probably this was a futuristic project at that time, ahead of its time. And we went to so many schools and exposed them to, uh, you know, for example, a laptop itself was a big thing for them they had never seen. So we ran this project for a year, and later, that, later on, this was uh, closed down by MHRD. Uh, but the work that we did as part of the project actually, you know, turned out to be a big, big, uh, you know, gift for me personally. Because I presented that work at MIT uh, in Learning International Networks Consortium, which, is, which was part of MIT in 2010 and 2013 and partly in 2016 as well. You will be surprised that not only was I able to go to MIT, but they even sponsored my travel uh, to be able to, you know, attend these conferences. Now, when I was doing this project or things before that, I never thought that this is going to take me to MIT or I'm going to get rewarded this way or that way. We all just, you know, would concentrate on the job at hand 
and uh, keep on taking initiatives keep on doing our little uh, little bit for for these children but then you know god was kind uh, particularly on me that i could uh, you know go to us for the first time and meet people at mit you know it was a dream for me uh, organizing one camp or two camps or three camps and uh, how many children are we going to cater to that we that was not on our mind at all the only thing that we had in mind was that we should do this and we should do it very well so but as the time progressed we probably did well and government kept on supporting us so 15 such camps we have been able to organize so far and through this program the best thing that happened to me as an individual Uh, was that i met around 200 eminent scientists from all over the country some of them are part of this session today uh, i would never have met them i would have i would never have spoken never you know i would have never got an opportunity to even speak to them uh, but this program gave me a platform where i could simply you know pick up phone and or arrange for their number and call up and tell you know tell them about the program and request them that if they could spare time and join us and on most of the occasions i would be successful professor narlekar for example accepted my invitation when i called him up i took his phone number from the academy yearbook uh, and when i called him he said yes i would definitely come so i have at least 100 150 such experiences where i simply picked up the phone number and called up directly so I, this gave me the confidence that i can pick up phone and call up a big 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 uh, you know personality in science and technology and there is no problem in doing that when i joined bombay university as a student at that time i would never never have courage to do that you know forget about arranging a number i would not even think about calling up professor Nar- narlekar on his phone and uh, you know talking to him but uh, the exposure that i got in the department for those for five years and the encouragement that i got from my teachers and my colleagues from my batch i felt that you know i can do these things and there is no harm in doing it you you don't need to be shy in taking initiatives so here you are today we have 4616 students who have been catered to and we we have organized the biggest camp in 2015 when we had 625 students on campus and we we organized the first fully residential camp in leh ladakh for the for for the children of that region in 2014 so there are so many memories if i have to talk about inspire i can you know talk for 3 days 4 days uh, such has been the experience for me personally so you can you know it's just a representative slide there are many more of them who have joined us and they were all national awardees they were you know batnagar awardees they were fellows of academies they were vice chancellors directors and then i got in touch with isro and i requested them that you know because children look at isro as an organization which has shaped india and is going to take india into the future so i thought that we sh- if we can get scientists from that uh, organization come and speak to the children in this program that would really motivate them and uh, again you know it was a phone call which i made at that time to director space application center ahmedabad and he was very forthcoming he said yeah i have understood the concept we will be happy to help you and you won't believe for almost all the camps at least two to three scientists from isro have been part of the program always and some of the mentors that i invited were you know out of the box i would say because they were not scientists but they were army officers so i thought that you know this could add a completely new dimension to inspire because they are they probably are the best motivators and it is always inspiring to speak to or to listen to a person who is in uniform so i did an experiment uh, a few years back when i invited the northern army commander and he accepted my invitation and when he uh, came he came in a helicopter so that itself was a big experience for the students that you know a person who is going to come and deliver lecture is actually coming by helicopter and uh, so we had uh, left in general hudda as a speaker left in general ranbir singh uh as a speaker 
Subrata Saha ji, Lieutenant General Subdha Saha as, uh, as a speaker, and Rakesh Sharma ji as a speaker, uh, General Rao as a speaker. So you can imagine that, you know, I would have never imagined uh, something of this sort had I not been to Bombay, frankly speaking. The confidence that I got from the department led me to thinking about inviting such people and be, you know making them part of this program and thinking out of the box i would say that that thought process itself came from bombay so here here is our own auditorium here in the campus and this is the rinchin auditorium of 14 core in in leh which we were give, you know allowed to use for this particular program and you can see this was the first camp in 2010 this guy minish does not have any hair on his head now uh, and he, he is professor bamzai uh, who was the vice chancellor when we initiated this program in 2010. So Sonam Wangchuk, you all must have heard about him. He has been part of many of our camps in Ladakh. Uh, and, and, you know, look at the faces of these children. And Professor Mishra is here. She is Nandini Sundar Hiranath from ISRO. She was probably the deputy mission director of Mars mission. So uh, we invited her to Ladakh. She accepted our invitation. Just imagine the joy these girls would have had when they interacted with a lady of her stature. And we would take them to this dam uh, at Alchi in Ladakh for field work. This is NHPC dam there. And, uh, you know, just to give them an exposure about how electricity is produced, how they get bijli in their, uh, you know, places. And similarly, Army would set up a special uh, exposure you know, hands-on activity for the students on campus where they would get, bring all kinds of gadgets. You can see drones being flown on campus here, on our campus. So this happened because we could, uh, you know, we had invited the senior army officers and they saw value in what we are doing, what we were doing. So they felt that they can also contribute and pitch in uh, so far as the mentoring and motivating these young students to for taking up science and technology and taking up challenging problems that country is facing. And then he, here, this picture is very unique. Uh, this is field work being done at uh, Khardungla Pass, which was the, until recently, this was the world's highest motorable pass. So you are not allowed to stand there actually for more than half an hour. But we could, you know, we could not just imagine that we could gain confidence after having been to Leh a few times that uh, the district administration in, in Leh supported us like anything. They gave us medical team, oxygen, uh, and all the support that we required. And then we had scientists from Wadia Institute of Himalayan Geology with us, as well as from PR Ahmedabad, who said that we should take them to uh, Khardungla because this is a lab. So we took all the children to Khardungla and a field work session was conducted for them at Khardungla. This is a unique thing probably which must have happened. And uh, the temperatures would touch sometimes minus 18. So you can see the screenshot from my own phone, which I had taken. Similarly, we had tinkering sessions by people from Intel uh, for the children there in Ladakh. So again, some pictures from our campus. And here, this girl, I don't remember her name, but she's from Turtuk. Turtuk is the last village, Indian village, on the Pakistan border in Kargil, in, sorry, in Leh. And she was the only student who could make it to the camp from that place. And she had to cross Khardungla to reach Leh to attend the camp. So this was a satisfying moment personally for us when we when we saw her that she you know being a girl student uh, she came all the way from that place to attend the camp and here is the feedback that we got from for all these camps well this was all about inspire uh, besides inspire we have done several other small activities i thought that time Will, would not limit you know would be limited and i won't, won't be able to talk about those things so next thing that uh, happened again was accidental uh, in 2013 may 1 there was an earthquake here uh, in, in in a place called kishtwad our campus is somewhere here and the earthquake uh, you know happened this was the epicenter here somewhere here and uh, i was in my office and the whole building was shaking and we all ran out of the building and then few you know fortuitous coincidences following this earthquake actually took me into this field of research in 2013. 
Uh, and one man who is responsible for doing that is Professor Shupriyo Mitra from Indian Institute of Science Education Research, Kolkata. And uh, our students, Swati Sharma, she is about to complete her PhD. And Devarchan, uh, he is from Mysore, Kolkata. She is from SMEDU. So these two students did a lot of hard work in the field to ensure that you know our plans that we had on paper were actually translated into reality on ground uh, when we planned to set up a broadband seismological field experiment in this region. Uh, another thing that happened at that time was the, that the Honorable Chief Minister of j and of that time uh, actually asked Vice Chancellor University of Kashmir, Professor Talat Ahmed, to undertake a field visit in that whole area to understand the damages that the earthquake had caused and was there any you know future danger of another earthquake that people might face but i was new to this area i am standing here and i had not much knowledge about this because i had not studied this as a subject uh, but because we had initiated some work in this area so i got a call from his office and they said that i should join this group uh, for this particular field visit so I was really lucky that I got an opportunity to go with him. I immediately said yes. As I said, as a person, I generally don't say no. I Yes is the first thing that I would say. No is the last thing that I would say. So I did not think twice and I went for this field visit. And you know, this opened uh, a, a vast opportunity for me in the sense that I got an idea what an earthquake is all about. What kind of damage does it cause? Why does it cause a damage? And why do we face these earthquakes? Now, the reason for, uh, you know, saying this is because my education till class 10 or class 9 was in Urdu. All the science that I did was in Urdu. So, uh, maybe I must have studied all these things in my childhood days, but that was all in Urdu. So, but after 10th, it was all in English. So, whatever I had learned till 9th actually was zero for me because I could not translate that into English anymore uh, after that. So, um, so this, these two things, this field trip and uh, you know, getting in touch with Professor Mitra, these actually later on uh, led us to a multi-institutional collaborative program and that earthquake, of course, which I was, which I mentioned in the beginning, uh, between these three institutions. That is my own university, Isar Kolkata, and University of Cambridge, and uh, the, this is the team of people that is involved, primary stakeholders. So we uh, thought of a field experiment in the region, but before that, we did a small study on that earthquake, which was, which uh, got triggered on May, May on, in May 2013, and we did focal mechanism study for this particular earthquake, and we found that this whole whole uh, you know uh, fault line was locked here and was creeping on the other side. So this was the initial uh, taste of this area for me uh, at that time. And uh, then, based on this study that we had carried out, we submitted several projects, you know, uh, one after the other, uh, to various funding agencies, both within India and abroad. And uh, the, probably the area of study was such that uh, most of the agencies did not say no to our request, and we got these projects. Uh, had I chosen my own core area as a research area and written projects, probably I would not have got this kind of support. But because this is uh, very crucial. Uh, area of study for for society as a whole uh, we we got support from all the agencies most of the agencies where we had applied for funds and so far since 2013 the experiment has generated enormous amount of data which is archived here in katra sm video as well as isar kolkata and i'm sure that this data is going to last for next 20 to 30 years and so many studies can be carried out uh, based on this data and so besides this experiment, we also undertook several outreach activities here for the people to sensitize them about uh, the danger of these earthquakes, how we need to change our lifestyle. Uh, and, and finally, we uh, submit, we sorry, came up with an MOU a couple of years back because we thought that there should be a framework. And then the MOU was signed between all the three parties, which is now basically the guiding doc document for all the work that we are undertaking. And so many exchange visits have happened between these three institutions since 2014. I have been to their place, they have been to my place, and, and vice versa. Now, uh, what, we, what basically is happening in the region and why we are doing this kind of a study and why what motivated me to pick up this area completely different from my you know, education, uh, so to say, 
in you can see here in this map uh, you know these these black boxes or squares are basically uh, talking about the population or city size and these yellow balls are the earthquake related deaths or the deaths caused by earthquakes in the past uh, so and this red or orange zone or not orange purple zone here i don't know which color you are able to see uh, is nothing but the plate boundaries so india is moving in this direction and the eurasia is moving in this direction so there is constant convergence happening here which which is basically the primary reason for all these earthquakes that are happening and in past you can see all these you know, the size of the ball will tell you the amount of people or the deaths that have been caused so close to 100000 lives have been lost you know lost in previous one century and sixth of the world's population actually lives in india so you can imagine if if such an earthquake were to occur here it will cause lot of devastation so therefore we need to be very very careful we need to be prepared we need to sensitize our people about the danger that is there you know beneath our feet and uh, we have had you know earthquakes uh, on both the ends of the kashmir seismic gap in muzaffar in 2005 and in kangra in 1905 so there's a gap in between these two earthquakes where the next event is going to so i, I was already talking about this convergence uh, of 18 to 20 mm per year that is happening in this region so there is a shortening that is going on constantly and strain is building up now there are three primary sources of earthquakes in this region one is within the himalayan mountains so which is this uh, you know you can say the bethan region here or even the the kishtwar earthquake that i mentioned some time back in 2013 that happened or within the under thrusting indian plate so this is the indian plate you can see here this is going down under thrusting beneath the eurasian plate so second uh, source of earthquakes is this region and the third one is the interface between the two which is this here between this eurasian plate and the indian plate so these the earthquake can happen anywhere and in this uh, you know i don't know whether i can play this. no this is not playing doesn't matter and uh, the mega thrust earthquakes or the major earthquake that is you know going to happen will cause the seismic movement which is denoted by m0 and this is equal to shear modulus which is given by mu and area and it, you know fault area and the slip that is going to be there so this area we can actually this is a constant and this area can be calculated using broadband seismology uh, the field experiment that i was mentioning to you and uh, the slip can be you know calculated or measured using gps geodesy so our ultimate aim is to do this also but right now we are concentrating on this particular aspect of it so i was mentioning about the gap so you can see here in 2005 the kashmir earthquake muzaffarabad was the epicenter that happened in 1905 there was an earthquake in the kangra region and this entire range in between so the previous earthquake was in 1885 so there has not been any major earthquake here which means that this this area has potential to trigger a major earthquake any time and uh, this lot of gps studies have been done by people uh from all over the world but you can see here this area has not been studied uh, you know that much because of the uh, probably the problem here uh, the outsiders don't want to come here it's not safe for them so this is the area of interest this whole area this is the kashmir seismic gap which i was mentioning so in this gap itself we planned this experiment and we established this broadband seismological experiment in phases so we can see here 11 to 14 2014 so different these are basically different grants as a part of which we have set up this field experiment right now we have close to 30 such sites in this region extending into himachal pradesh on this side and then here they are almost close to you know the loc in punch and we have two stations here in kashmir valley as well and sometimes to to identify or to do a undertake a reconnaissance survey to be able to identify a site where we can set up a station you have to go through some of the deadliest roads in india so the this kishtwar kilard road i had been to this place last week 
this is one of the most dangerous roads in anywhere in india but well we don't hesitate because that is how the work is and we need to do that so here is the you can this particular road which you saw here in the picture is now slightly better so we went to this place called sohal last week and uh, this is one of the sites there so we have to sometimes climb on rooftops to make sure that the solar panels are working properly so this is one of the stations uh, which is set up in a place called badarwa here and these are our field stations at different places so these are 5 by 5 by 5 feet rooms where the instrument is kept inside and the solar panels are kept on top so that they can keep working 24/7 365 days and this is how the instrument looks this is the actual uh, seismometer and this is a little small linux computer which is used as a data logger and there is a little hard disk uh, which we simply replace after periodically we go there for servicing and uh, this instrument is placed here in this small enclosure and it's powered by solar power and this uh, this one white thing here is a little gps antenna which will time stamp the data so this is how the how uh, the site looks from inside uh, some of the studies that we have already carried out uh, is this this uh, study that we did uh, along this you know line of convergence uh, this was presented in 2014 in agu and based on this we actually identified the depth of moho moho is the you know line of separation between the uh, crust and the mantle so in this region this this is what we believe is the depth of moho so in, uh, this place is very close to jammu called nagrota so there it is roughly 40 kilometers and as we go to fagumat in kishtwad it dips down to 55 kilometers and similarly we have mht well these are little uh, technical terms but not very difficult to understand if you have not read about them you can read about them later on these are basically the defaults that are there in the himalayan system so main boundary thrust main central thrust so we have been able to identify these in this region uh, based on the uh, receiver function work that we have done and the 2013 earthquake was also plotted on this and we could actually Uh, from the broadband work and from this uh, focal mechanism work we could actually pinpoint this location absolutely you know at the same place with both the studies and we found that this is a locked zone and this is the creeping zone on the other side and similarly we also did the so we call our experiment as jacksnet jammu and kashmir seismological network and we did um, noise studies with this uh, particular network to understand how good our experiment is how good data our instruments are recording is it of international standards or not so there is a united states geological survey standard for that uh, there are models actually available for that and so when we did this study for one of the stations here in very close to my campus so you can see this is the upper limit new high noise model and this is the lower limit so if your instrument is able to produce uh, within this range the noise levels within this range then it is of international the data is of international standard so we you can see that uh, we could you know we could show that the experiment that we have set up is actually producing good quality data similarly another study that was carried out uh, which was published in uh, in 2018 uh, in this we could actually pinpoint at two zones in the kishtwad region where the you know the seismicity was uh, basically concentrating and we could also find frontal ramp and a lateral lamp ramp structure in this region in 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 kishtwad based on this work and recently because of the lockdown now what has happened these instruments are very sensitive if you walk past next to an instrument even that would be picked up as a you know sound signal or as noise by the instrument it will be recorded or if you tap the ground with your feet next to the instrument even that would be picked up but during lockdown what happened that everybody was indoors no vehicles were moving there was hardly any cultural noise that was there so people throughout the world carried out studies to find out what was the impact of lockdown on on uh, you know capability of these instruments to record uh, ground motion data or to detect earthquakes so we did a little pilot study this has been submitted uh, to a journal 
and we found that uh, you know in this pilot analysis that maximum of 10 db and 8 db redu reduction in the cultural noise uh, was there and this could actually improve the detectability of earthquakes by around by a factor of 30 now besides this we as i mentioned earlier we have been uh, undertaking a lot of outreach activities because i feel that outreach is my you know my uh, main area i probably do not like uh, doing other things so much as i like outreach uh, so inspire i already mentioned to you we have also done a national level program for young scientists to motivate them to take up this area similarly we did a workshop in 2014 again for young scientists which was sponsored by uk re we also have uh, organized public lectures by eminent scientists in this area sponsored by nasi local chapter then a royal society you know earthquake resilience meeting was done in 2019 in jammu for government officers we during the during this lockdown we did one workshop for yasi district because there were earthquakes happening here so the district administration approached us and we uh, actually organized a program for them with the help of an ngo from nepal it was all done online and besides this we have uh, you know conducted several pop popular you know talks in various schools for children because ultimately we believe that if we have to be prepared to face the, this particular problem and take it head on we must prepare we must be prepared we must be you know ready uh, in terms of our capability to handle earthquakes because earthquake is not going to kill us it is the buildings that are going to kill us so if we can quickly retrofit our buildings understand that safe assembly zones identify them in every area and have the go bags ready for for every household then the damage is going to be less and uh, in 2012 like, i was really fortunate that all the work uh, that i had done little work i had done uh, was recognized by honorable vice president of india uh, when i received this award from jnk government and this is when i left the department and this is how i am today and this journey has taught me so many things and i think it would have been impossible to do whatever i have done in last 10 15 years had i not been to bombay and had i not been a student of all my teachers in the department of physics in mumbai thank you very much um it was a truly inspirational talk uh, and very heart touching your experiences um, i think it is thank said you. that um, adversity brings out uh, the best in us and i think you are a great example of that and um, i think today's talk will uh, you know help our students to uh, see their lives in proper perspe perspective that uh, any difficulty uh, can be overcome i mean uh, yes your journey is uh, something that they can learn from we can all learn from and also i must refer to your voluminous social work and your outreach activities i mean it's an eye opener and uh, truly in fact in, in fact ma'am just to interrupt you because you apne meri dukhti rag pe haath rakh diya when i was uh, new in the department i still remember one incident which happened with me I, it was a lucky incident for me although someone else could have taken it in a negative sense i was in the lab in the nyaneshwar bhavan i think the back the building behind is it called yes. nyaneshwar bhavan if i am not yeah so the lab was going yeah the lab was going on and uh, one of my teachers uh, you know was conducting lab that day uh, and he's not thinking about anyone who is uh, you know part of the this particular session and uh, i was supposed to set up an exp you know a circuit and show it to him but i had never seen a breadboard i had never seen a cro before that in my entire graduation uh, because we used to work with the ready made kits here so i tried for 30 40 minutes and i could not connect this circuit because i really didn't know what to do and he came after around 40 to 45 minutes to check our circuits and when he saw that i had not done anything he actually shouted at me he said tumko kon bola hai idhar tumko agar ye bhi lagana nahi aaya circuit tum kya karoge life mein and uh, i took it in a positive sense because he was right as a teacher at msc level 
he expected that little bit from me which i didn't know and it were little incidents like this which kept on motivating me that no i need to do this and then in the next 10 15 days with the help of my friends and with the help of uh, some of our, some of the other teachers i learned all that and i demonstrated uh, that experiment to to sir at that time so as you rightly said that whenever you face a challenge or a difficulty i think you need to take it you know in the positive sense take it head on there is nothing that you cannot do and uh, you are young i am now you know older than the students of department so your age is the right age that accept everything as a challenge and do it and don't say no to anything that is my take on life that whatever comes your way uh, you should say yes don't say no to anything yeah please very true sir so i think uh, the session will be now open for uh, questions and comments so please raise your hand and uh, also you can type in the chat box so uh, anybody want to say anything or uh, have a question to dr wanchu please raise your hand Uh, and uh, thank you ma'am in fact uh, ravi sir agar ko aap kuch bolna chahte hain main shayad aapko rok raha hu uh, i remember couple of other uh, you know small episodes that happened to me which may be very helpful to the students of msc who are uh, who are who are you know part of the department right now or who may be joining in future when i joined the uh, department i was in hostel i remember my senior was abhijit and uh, i was told that he is one of the best students of the senior batch so as a curious young junior msc first year uh, you know i went to his room in the hostel and i asked him yaar as i say this is my background do you think i'll be able to finish my msc here because at that time i remember that if you would flunk in one paper you would lose you know all the papers gone even if you fail in lab all the theory is gone that is the kind of system uh, our university was following at that time so he said sab ho jayega quantum mechanics mein reh jaoge this was the comment he made uh, to tumko bahut mehnat karna padega maine kaha theek hai yaar kar lenge koi baat koi baat nahi but main kar to lunga na he said nahi nahi kar loge aisa kuch nahi hai and you won't believe when i went for my uh, you know first year i did maximum hard work on quantum mechanics i used to work with professor press and you know trouble him again and again Uh, and i learned it learned probably the mathematics of it so well that i used to teach my friends uh, you know part of it in, in those classes that i mentioned during my session but when i went for the exam uh, for one hour i could not actually solve all the pay, uh, questions and i could attempt only two because uh, there was probably a potential well problem or some other problem i did it once the answer was wrong i did it twice the answer was wrong on third attempt i did it correctly and i did not want to move beyond that particular question because i thought you know i have done it so many times how is it possible that i won't be able to do it in the exam eventually i could attempt only two questions and when i returned to campus i rushed to professor press and i you know told him my story that this is what i could do uh, and look at the greatness of the teacher he said why don't you sit down and do it again in front of me write exactly what you have written in your exam i'll tell you what would happen so i sat in his cabin and i wrote uh, both those questions and showed it to him he said well yeah you should get 18 marks that is the minimum that you require to pass this now go and concentrate on the other papers and i got 30 uh, 29 out of 30 in quantum mechanics uh, you know paper and then i did very quite well in the other papers that was a different story but these you know small incidents and the affection and and love shown by the teachers and the guidance that each one of us each one has given to me probably was the blessing for me ravi sir okay add for those who are sitting and listening the inspire i don't call it is a is a live in camp with the young student morning evening breakfast time even in the morning tea at any time any student can walk in with his any problem it has nothing to do what you are taught or what you spoke it can be all general problems of their what they suspect in life so that 10 days for everyone young and the old is a great learning and the year i was i think the first batch or second batch 
big people like uh, Tyal, who was a vice chancellor, became vice chancellor in Delhi University. He was there. A lot of people were there. But these young kids. So I feel now, it, the, after five, six years, Sunil will be a politician because all these young people <laughs> would be the voter. And whole definitely JNK, no, sir. <laughs> whole JNK would be voting for him. No, no, sir. Definitely no. <laughs> no. Best wishes. It's a great job being done. It needs a lot of organization, even to arrange for lunch for 500 kids. I've been to one such other camp in Kulshetra. Uh, it's a big job where there are 1,300 small kids sitting and we were asked to speak in Hindi. And can you imagine speaking a subject <laughs> in Hindi? So they, they, these are the experiences for both for the teacher as well as the children. Fantastic. In um, fact, sir, in, when I was in department, I remember that there was a refresh course that was being organized by department. And I think Professor Gupta was coordinating. And I was, as a student, you know, see, th th this is how things change for an individual. As a student, I was asked to conduct the practical session uh, for that refresher course. And I remember there were some experiments on fiber optic kits, which I had to learn, obviously, uh, to be able to teach teachers. And when I went uh, there and I conducted those experiments, it, you know, I, I gained a lot of confidence that, you know, I can do this. Similarly, biophysics department next door, they, they had started a program, MSc Biophysics. It was new. We have lost connection. It seems so. Um, so while uh, Sunil is talking about Professor Gupta, I would also like to add uh, two lines. Uh, I think he is one of the best uh, head of the departments that I have seen. So because uh, it was during his tenure that I was given any kind of responsibility. Uh, responsibility. I mean, before that, I was just teaching and doing research, and I was very happy. And then he made me uh, take up uh, MSc Part One lab, and uh, I was very. Uh, ever to doing it, I actually the, even the thought was uh, very you know uncomfortable for me. But he uh, gently, very nicely made me do it, and I think I enjoyed it. And uh, I, I also learned from him, and I followed his own model, which was to uh, get uh, the work done by people by giving them just the right amount of freedom and uh, equal amount of discipline. So, and we, we also conducted uh, the, our first uh, event with the Indian Academy of Sciences during Professor Gupta's tenure. So, Dr. Press and myself, we organized this uh, huge workshop for uh, students, uh, college students, BSc students. And uh, I think about 150 or 200 students came for that. And some of our teachers, present teachers, were student volunteers during that time. And Dr. Gupta gave me, I mean, just the right amount of freedom and equal amount of involvement from, from the side of the head. He didn't leave everything on me and he didn't uh, try to take the control of everything. And this is one thing which I have learned from him uh, while organizing things or even in administration. So thank you, sir.